So welcome, everybody. Thank you very much. What a fabulous turnout. I'll tell you, uh, we've, this is the 12th of 12 uh, shows that we've had across the country. We saved the best for last. Uh, special thanks to, to Mike Jones and, and April. I tell you, uh, it takes a lot of effort because this isn't about coming and seeing a, a strategy. It's the relationships that you all have developed uh, with April and her team, and specifically Mike. And uh, a huge portion of why you're here is because of that trust, hopefully, that you've built with that team. Uh, and we want to enhance that by bringing solutions to the table. Our vendors, our vendors are key for us. Uh, you know, we've got some, some key vendors, some key brands that we can all leverage together and take to market. And I think uh, you see them in, in, in force here today. Uh, lastly, our field folks, uh, you know, Tina and, and Daryl, uh, we used to work together in my previous role here at Cenex. Uh, best of the best in terms of being in the field and really driving solutions and they get it. Uh, they're here to represent and help uh, us also stand up these solutions. And then of course the rest of the field account execs that uh, are in part of April's team who are absolutely crucial. They're the ones across the country that, that have those relationships with you all that's so key. And the reason it's so key because things are moving so quickly that if you do not talk to these folks and do not develop these relationships, uh, there's a lot of things that we're doing that will not get out. There'll be an announcement uh, made on Tuesday with our Verizon relationship that will be launched uh, publicly. Uh, that's the official announcement, which we're very excited about. We've got a lot of the Verizon folks in this room. That is the key pillar, the keystone, and the foundation of everything that we're building upon, and everything else really kind of flows around it. And what I would like to do today is take you through this strategy, help you understand what that strategy really means for us so that you understand, should you want to partake, what components of that strategy make sense to you? How can you leverage your core competency in your customer base? And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you some of the things that we're going to do in terms of programs and processes and that we're going to put in place to help you better your business. Uh, each of the vendors will have their own programs that they will introduce and talk about but the overarching programs and processes that we have in place will enable you to join and, and be either part of one vendor or part of the entire solution. The beauty is you can couple it or you can take it independently. You can have it as a hosted model, an agent model, a co-managed model, or a complete managed solution. So depending on your skill sets and your desires, we'll lay these solutions out for you and hopefully you'll see where we're coming from and why the excitement. So that being said, let me um, just kind of take you through real quick of the strategy and really the, the building pillars. What, what I wanted to do first was kind of touch base on some of the challenges that we're seeing today in the enterprise. And when we talk about mobility, it's more than just devices, as Gary was saying. Uh, you ask 10 different people, what's mobility? They'll give you 10 different answers. Trust me, no matter where you are in the world. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they got one of those mobile wheelchairs and rolled out they talked about mobility. Go online and look up mobility. That'll pop up. So why am I saying that? Well, it's very specific. Um, when you talk about mobility, it's really about capturing information at the point of contact, moving that information uh, either through a wired or wireless infrastructure, and then leveraging that on the back end to ensure that you can securely manage it, uh, hold policies in place, and, and, and provide insight <coughs> and analytics around what that information that user is accessing information for. And this is the challenge that we're seeing the enterprises having. And as you can see here, you know, it basically starts from the basic connectivity that is required. From the time that mankind, from what we know was created, we've always had a desire to communicate. That hasn't changed. But the medium and how we communicate has changed. All the way from the vinyl records to eight tracks to cassettes to CDs to everything now streaming. So our desire to communicate and collaborate hasn't changed but the medium in which we take it has changed. And so we are trying to drive that as a solution, as a service, depending on the type of device and the verticals that we're focusing on. If you look at the tools, we're seeing everything being mobilized. Everything from content to uh, back-end resources, whether now it's being hosted into the cloud with a thin client on the edge, and or it's true private clouds being created to better sustain and serve businesses from a scalability standpoint. We are trying to couple products and solutions to enable you, the partner, to be able to take these solutions and solve these business challenges for, for, for some of the enterprises. And then, of course, the infrastructure, scalable infrastructure. Uh, Gary made a point earlier about the comparison of the IBM mainframes back in the day and, and the, the processing power that you've seen in these devices, the, the smartphones today. Well, if you really think about it, 
these devices are really the Trojan horse. They are the, the devices, the, the computing power that's driving all the upgrade of the infrastructures, storage, content, everything that you're seeing, it is putting stress on the infrastructure and what we're seeing more and more enterprises struggling with, what do I do? Do I buy a bigger router? Well, I worked for Cisco for many years and our answer was put a bigger switch, put a bigger router in there. Nobody talked about the infrastructure, nobody talked about the T1s, the MPLS backbones, right? Go talk to your carrier about that. The devices, the devices were more powerful. Nobody was formatting the information on the back end so that they would be pulled up on a smartphone, on a tablet, or on a laptop. They are mobilizing information and there's a lot of opportunities from the device all the way to the back end. So what I endeavor to do today is take you through how are we, with our VARs and with our joint vendors here, going to provide you with the ability and the solutions to be able to solve some of these challenges. But prior to going, um, I think we're at a perfect storm. The perfect storm is here. Um, and, and let me just kind of share with you why I believe that. First of all, you know, I've been in the business for 27 years. I've always been on the carrier side. Started off with MCI early on, went to Cisco. Symbol uh, did some time at Avaya as well. And then obviously Motorola took Symbol over. And I was fortunate enough to see that entire change and evolution of the infrastructure. And I remember times where we had, you know, cell, cell coverage, 2G. We had pagers, we had cell phones, we had a PDA. You had three different devices that we all have in one device now. The networks weren't able to support data streaming. We were dialing up in 58K lines, if you remember, in modems. Then the network really got upgraded to where it was a bit more robust and the internet came around. So now we had the content, we had the data, still it was wired. And all of a sudden the cell phone became more powerful. They combined the PDA, the paging. Now you had one device giving you multiple functions. Now, for the first time, the first time in technology evolution, the three have come together. The network, the content, and the devices. The CPU is there, the content is there, and the infrastructures are robust enough to be able to address that. And that is why all of our lives have changed. Since 2007, there have been five versions of IP phones. There have been four versions of the iPad. It took the internet 20 years to take hold. It took the telephone 100 years. It took the mobile phone 25 years to get in our hands. It's taken the iPhone five years to change our lives. Now everything is touch. So if you think about what does that mean to you, what does that mean to the business customer? Security, employee-owned devices, enterprise resources, who owns them, who can access them? What if somebody leaves, gets fired, or a device gets stolen? How do we control that data? And if you start looking at some of the statistics that support it, you start really understanding the challenges that these enterprises are struggling with. We are finding with. 20 to 30 percent of our VARs will basically evaporate in the next two to three years if they don't embrace services in the cloud. As more and more is being put up in the cloud, there are less and less products to be sold. Where does that put you as a VAR? If you don't have a service-based business, if you don't have an annuities-based business, you will come under pressure because there are going to be less and less products that you'll sell on the edge. It's going to be a service-led and a product follow, not the traditional sense of the business where we've been product-led and maybe services follow. We are bringing that opportunity to expand that portfolio of services. So what does that really mean? All of this infrastructure that we've talked about is really trying to access either resources that make you productive and or back-end business line operation type of CRM, ERP uh, solutions that you need to run your, your business. This is what it's for. I travel quite frequently. As you notice, I didn't shake anybody's hand today. Please forgive me. I, I'm just not getting over a cold, and I don't like to pass uh, cooties on. But that being said, I just got back, and I was in a plane, and that's how I got sick. And uh, Anyway, I looked up, and I just realized I was in, up, you know, looking around. Everybody pulled out. You know, the plane was getting ready to leave. Put up your blackberries, strawberries, blah, blah, blah. Everybody puts them up because, you know, they're all pounding away. We get airborne. Ding. The light comes on. Okay, you can pull out your electronics, but don't, you know, put on your cellular networks. People pull out their iPads, their, their, their tablets. And I looked around, and of course, what do you see? They are first doing email, because it's real easy. They'll surf and read the news instead of reading the paper. Then they'll play Angry Monkeys or Angry Birds or whatever. Maybe a couple of brain twisting games or Sudoku or Sudoku or whatever. And then they'll put that up, and they pull out the laptop, and they start the work. Ask, your, ask yourself why. Apple has not been able to crack that market. They talked about this fuzzy consumerization of IT. 
I've never bought off on that. What's happened is they've come out with such a sexy interface. But nothing's changed with Apple. And trust me, you know, uh, my family and I are big Apple investors, you know, the idiots that jump on board. Why? Because of the back end. The music, the, the, the iTunes, the, all that that comes with it from a consumer standpoint. But when you look at the enterprise, this is what you're trying to get to. Your Microsoft, your Excels, your, your SQLs, your Oracles, your SAPs. Guess what? Apple is not going to do that because they won't open up their interfaces and Microsoft won't do the same. Now, that being said, this is really driving why folks are going mobile. The opportunity that we see is mobilizing this infrastructure here so that folks could access that back-end infrastructure. And with Windows 8 and some of the Surface tablets and devices they're coming out with, they've brought that sexiness and they've leveraged that 99.9% .9 of enterprises being on Microsoft, bringing those two together, and I will bet that it'll be a two-horse race. Hopefully I'll see you in another year when we have another show, and you can come tell me either I'm full of it or you're right. It'll be a two-race, two-horse race. It'll be Microsoft and it'll be Apple. Apple will be on the consumer side for the most part with the exception of some retail, hospitality, little apps, and it'll be Microsoft driving true workforce mobility and productivity solutions. Android, that'll be a market around, but that'll be driving cell phones. It's too open, it's too lax, there's too many infringements in terms of security. That's my prediction. Everybody else, I think, is going to go by the wayside. And I'll make one more comment. Apple, Apple TV, tablets, and the Mac. So what have they done? They're roaming across three to four screens. That's why they've got, they get top dollar for their product. Microsoft, Xbox. They got their uh, office, and now they've got their devices. Three screens. Look at Google, Google TV. They've got the email and the whole back-end infrastructure, and they've got Android. That's why they've got value. The only other one to match is if you look at Kindle, the Kindle Fire with Amazon. Guess what? Silicon is not what people are buying. They're buying that device because they want access to that content on the back end. Everybody else is a commodity. LG, Huawei, HTC, name them. They're all selling for $299. When I was at Motorola, we opened up at $599 for our Zoom tablet. Cinex was, was, I feel sorry for Cinex, they bought over 20,000 units from me. Not even a month later, Best Buy was selling them for $299. There's nothing there. There's no solutions. It was just a hardware piece of product. That was it. They didn't have the three screens that you see in these other three. So now there's going to be a clear delineation between consumer and enterprise. And this is what we're bringing to the table together for you. Now lastly, if you really look at this transition, we're taking everything that you've seen in a traditional PC or a laptop, we're moving it over. We're extending and mobilizing this infrastructure to provide you with true mobile platforms so that you can mobilize the infrastructures for your end user customers. Whether it's voice, whether it's collaboration and video, whether it's just pure documents or whether it's pure, pure access to email. All of those are open opportunities. And if you really look at it, these are some statistics. I know it's small, but within the different verticals, wired, wireless, 802.11, 3G, 4G, wired infrastructure, huge boom right now, double digit growth. You see some of the CAGRs and percent growth. It's everything from you know, your, your base savings all the way down to the mobilization of enterprises, anywhere between 43% and higher. Numbers vary depending on the analyst. The point I'm trying to make, mobilize that back end. That is where the opportunities, whether it's healthcare, whether it's field force automation, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's state local government. There is a play in every one of the areas, and everybody's trying to go mobile. The question is, how do you control it? And how do you mobilize it? So let's get into really the four pillars of our strategy. First of all, we've looked at the business models. This is a true enterprise play. And I'll explain what we consider as enterprise. Secondly, end-to-end -end solutions. We've had a lot of gaps. We've launched this business unit in November. We didn't have all the products. Gary talked about connect, control, and, and, um, and, and secure and control, connect, move, control, and secure. Those components really are the ability to connect the device, move it, and then control everything around it. We had to bring in best of breed, best in class vendors like Verizon, like GTAC, like Fujitsu, Psyon, and it goes on. We've got over 43 lines, Gary, in your 49. We've signed like nine just in the last three or four months in order to fulfill this. So today, 99% of these solutions are available to you. And there'll be more coming on exciting on the, on the infrastructure side. These are the platforms. I'll cover them in a, in, a, in a bit. 
and explain where they fit. And then, of course, what does that mean to you? And that's why you're here at the end. Faster margin, higher margin, faster to market, support, lead generation, marketing, enablement. These are the things that these vendors have invested and are here to support us in doing. All right, so let's define enterprise mobility. So ask yourself, what is enterprise mobility? Not all at once, just one at a time. Enterprise mobility, does anybody want to take a crack at it? Enterprise mobility. It's really capturing information at the point of contact, moving it securely and accurately, getting push or pulling information irrespective of where you are, what device, anytime, to anything, anywhere. That's really what it's about. Full stop. There's a lot of pieces to make that happen now. And when we really look at it, at Cenex, I want to define this for you all. It's everything from the demanding environments to data acquisition, irrespective whether it's the indoor or outdoor. It's really about mobilizing your workforce. It's a new way of thinking. It's not just, oh, here's a device, and if you leave or you quit, guess what? How much information is on a device? It's scary. It really is scary. If somebody leaves or gets stolen or they get fired, you can't get that information. It's not like the laptop anymore where it's in the office and you lock them out. You know, I once worked at a company and they basically said, you know, the best policy for security is don't have wireless LAN. We don't have wireless LAN. Well, why not? Well, we don't have any security infringement, really, okay? There are statistics that say over 75% of infringements happen from somebody on the inside. So it's important to have a policy. And that's where this comes in. Lastly, irrespective of the environments, we'll go everything from white collar, what I call the prosumer consumer business, all the way out to the ruggedized industrial applications, line of business applications. We cover all of it. We've got the products end to end. They don't all fit in my group. This is why different folks are here from Cenex. But the point is, you have access to the entire portfolio. Connect, move, and control. Capturing information at the point of activity. That's what I really want to resonate. I just indicated, connecting anything, anyone, from anywhere, at any time, on any device. This is what they're after. Not Angry Birds. Not Sudoku. This is what they're after. It really is. And if we can mobilize this to secure it, this is where the opportunity is. Storage is being increased. Infrastructure is being increased. Security is being increased. Device proliferation being brought by employees is being increased. All of those for me, I look at chaos. But chaos creates opportunity. And this is where the opportunity truly resides. So if you really look at it, machine to machine. We just rolled out over a 6,000 node solar energy backbone across Japan after the tsunami, all controlled by machine to machine. Wind turbine power as well as solar. Managed, controlled, air, wind velocity, and the amount of electricity being processed on an hourly, weekly basis, depending on where it's coming. And then regulating that and shifting that energy. That's true machine to machine. Then you've got first responder systems. For example, heart goes out and, and prayers go out to all those folks who got hit by the, the current tornado. But you know what people don't understand, same thing that happened in New York, same thing that happened in Japan, it decimated the entire area. There's no cell phone coverage. So what they've literally got to do is bring in a base station to set up a what we call a micropop. And from there, emit services so that it's bringing down either satellite or the closest 3G, 4G connection, and on the back end, pumping out 802.11, and really creating a sub-network when there's nothing around. These are the kind of products that we're providing to the market to provide a first responder service. Emergency, business continuity, disaster recovery. Any device, anywhere, anytime, and then of course, the traditional sense of the business. You and I, white collar, you're in a hotel. Each hotel room for me looks like a minor office, a little satellite office. Think about it. We go in and we expect wireless LAN. Starbucks, I remember they used to charge for it. We expect wireless LAN. Lobbies, we expect wireless LAN. I drive down the street sometimes and my phone is popping up with all the wireless LANs that are available. I remember having to config that a couple of years back. It was really complex. So the things that we depend on are the things that are changing the way that we compute and the way that we interact. And this is what we're building, and this is what really true enterprise mobility is. So simply stated, connect, move, and control. This is really the transformational strategy and the solutions that we're bringing to market. We truly feel it's a bit different than what the others are doing. 
Um, 27 years in the business, 17, I spent international. I've worked with these distributors worldwide. I could tell you they're great. You know, Tech, Ingram, uh, ScanSource, all of them, Avnet, Arrow. You know what? They all do their thing and they're good at what they do. But I'll tell you where they fail. They fail in that they've got many different business units where their products sit. And I wish I were smart, but that's not what this is about. I'm doing what they would not do for the number of years I came to them when I was at Cisco and Motorola. They want to have eight different groups, have products everywhere, and you go to them, oh, call this other group, oh, call this other group. When Kevin gave me the opportunity, I told Kevin, the only way that I'll do this is if you pull the business and you put it under one business unit and we report straight into you. So that we can have influence and take it out of incubation and once this thing gets going, then we can bring it back into the mainstream of the business. It has to be an incubation. The business is moving too fast. There are too many components. So we have grasped the core components that make this work and then leverage everybody else in the organization in order to provide an end-to-end -end solution. So it's really about platforms. And that's the key that I want you to really think about. So what do these platforms look like? Connect, move, and control. What's connect? Everything from the prosumer to the consumer. Prosumer is the <coughs> professional consumers, white collars like you and I. Then the consumer is really that consumer business. We have a huge consumer business like the Staples and Best Buys that are selling to the small business, business to consumer or business to business. And then we have that enterprise. So it's all the products that you see, your basic tablets, your basic handheld devices, all the way out to your machine to machine devices, rugged computing, all your terminals, point of sale, advanced data capture, laptops, notebooks, all of those, any device that connects fits in our connect pillar. We have a huge amount of products there, depending on the vertical and depending on the application. The Move, one of our newest capabilities here, one of the most exciting for me, this is the infrastructure. We've never had a play here, really. Uh, we were kind of dabbling around with AT&T when I first took over this thing. That was one of the biggest challenges that myself and the team faced. Who and how do we go after this market? It clearly became evident that we needed a fixed line. It wasn't just about wireless. It was a fixed line infrastructure because all of this wireless was putting stress and pressure on the backbone infrastructure. And if you can't get a hold of that, you're basically going to be relegated to wait until they fix that decision and then they'll let you in at the end of the day. So we went out and forged a relationship with Verizon and we've got all of these components. Now let me say something. The products that we carry, Gary mentioned earlier, he teased it up nicely for me that we don't have any competing products at these roadshows. We are not broadline on my side. We are very, very particular and very surgical in what we're doing. We're bringing in products and solutions that address certain verticals and certain markets. So in other words, I'm not going to go have five of the same variant like others do and say, oh, here's a smorgasbord. What device do you want? You know, or here I've got five different carriers and I've got an MSA with every one. Which cheapest price do you want now? We're picking best of breed, best in class in each one. We're partnering up in them. And we're going into the markets to serve the markets to solve problems. It'll be easier for you. It's easier for us to manage. And it's easier for us to truly bundle a solution rather than having 15 different variants. Now, we've got a lot of variants here, obviously, because that's by definition. There's different verticals and different devices. Core infrastructure, we're driving everything from the intelligent IP networks and backbones all the way out to the basic wireless, whether it's 802.11 whether it's 80216. So you've got indoor outdoor mesh, indoor outdoor wireless, you've got fixed line infrastructure, point to point, point to multipoint, you got MPLS backbones for the logical infrastructure that you may want to put in place instead of stringing circuits in the old way, frame relay or ATM from here to another state and pay thousands of dollars for that point to point connection. That is no longer needed. And so we wanted to bring the next generation of vendors and solutions to the table. Last one, another big hole. We had a bunch of devices. We called it mobility. We still do today. But we had none of the other stuff to move the product. Now, the last portion of it was control. Secure and control. Secure and control is very key. It's not MDM, mobile device management. Everybody says that. That's so yesterday. It's MRM, mobile risk management, because it's more than device. There's over 15, there's a lot, but over 15 supposedly leading in Gartner uh, types of products that are considered MDM or MAM, mobile application management, or mobile risk management, or mobile expense management. Those are the different categories. Each one plays differently. So it's very difficult to get one that addresses them all. They all have their own little corks and how they fit, depending on the solution and the vertical. So we had to go out and really study the market and make sure that we've got everything from native device for those that just want to control the device, 
the operating system. They want to lock it. They want to wipe it. They want to be able to locate it and update certain policies to that device. Others said, I don't care. The employee brought it. And if they're going to go, I'm going to wipe their entire device out. Eh, you can't do that. There's laws against that. So what we've done now is we've created a dual persona capability on some of these devices to be able to put a container or a sandbox to house that corporate information where it's encrypted, both on the air interface and triple des encrypted in terms of getting into it. And then we've taken a step further where now we also can put a VPN on it and do an SSL link back where you're secured all the way to the host agent. So all the way from the router, over the fixed infrastructure, over the wireless, triple des encrypted with a security password username, and all the way to the device. And then lastly, brought in a couple of companies to help us do what I call AIR, analytics, insight, and reporting. Now you got the device. Now you're able to manage it. You're able to look at it. Now you want to figure out, well, you know what? What's the utilization? What's the optimization? What applications are they loading? What are they doing with these devices? Why is Adnan down the street, you know, at CHOPS, trying to access the network and getting in with some other device that's not registered? Because he downloaded some application, a VPN client, now he's trying to get in. That is not a registered MAC address or an IP address. That is what AIR allows you to do. So we've basically taken the entire infrastructure and designed it in such a way that depending on the segment, small, medium, large, depending on the vertical, and depending on the technology, how and who gets in. I call that the 3D approach. What segment, small, medium, large, there's different solutions. Then you look at the verticals that they're trying to get into and then you look at the, the actual technologies. Is it device management? Is it application? Is it risk? Is it analytics? Depending on what that customer wants, you are able now to design a service and create an annuity. This two pillars right here are probably your biggest services led platforms that we'll talk about today. Everything else up here, it's a means to an end. It's a commodity and it's a quick race to the bottom. But you gotta have some sort of device to get in. But at the end of the day, by providing this is where you'll make your higher margin, faster to market, differentiation, and give you the end to end solution. That's really the message that we're talking about today. All right. So, I made a bold statement. Let's drill down and explain. Let me take you through piece by piece what this really means. What are the deliverable services? Connected people, connected devices, and connected networks is really what it falls into. We talked about connected people. It's really UI, prosumer, consumer businesses. Tablets, phones, device management, expense management, all the things that you would expect to see in a regular white collar environment for a device. All the things that you need in order to optimize the utilization all the way down to the actual device procurement. And with our relationship that we've just forged, we're able to do this. Before, this was not an option for you. You'd have to go to a brick and mortar, or for a large enterprise, you were covered by some of the carriers. Now you have a mechanism to be able to sell the small, medium business all the way up. Connected devices, point of sale, advanced data capture, your laptops, your notebooks, anything that is enabling you to access the network from a vertical solution standpoint and ruggedized. So your, your, your you know, rugged GTAC in the police cars, first responder systems in the fire trucks. You got your laptops, you got point of sale in retail, you've got advanced data capture in warehousing. You got mounted devices in fleet management and in trucks. This is really what we consider connected devices. Connected networks, I refer this to networks in motion. This is anything that's embedded in a, in a moving vehicle or is used for disaster recovery or business continuity. If your network goes down and your fixed line goes down, you need a device that's on a different network to be able to pick that signal back up. There's mission critical applications out there that can't afford to be down. That's where your wireless wide area network as a disaster recovery comes in. We call that business continuity. A couple hundred bucks, that's a peace of mind. The minute that infrastructure goes down, within 30 milliseconds it shifts over to that router, that 3G, 4G router to give you access out. Some may say, well, but you know what? It's not going to replace my network. But hopefully you're not going to be down for days. If that's the case, you better build a dual entrance into your network, which we can do as well, right? A fiber optic ring or a metro ethernet of some sort, right? So this is everything from connecting remote locations to providing disaster recovery business continuity. The building blocks, the foundation is the beauty. And this is really what we've done. As I mentioned, we've run across this, the device management and optimization infrastructure with the different vendors. We've driven all the mobility as a service platform so now you can bring it down through the cloud if you don't want it on-prem to give that option 
and then we provided analytics that go all the way across. And these building blocks are the six platforms I'll be talking about. The beauty that you got to remember that these are flexible. If you as a partner say, you know what, I could deliver those services, great. You deliver everything, buy the solution from us on how you want to do it, and then you deploy it. And we support you if you need it. If you don't, do it on your own. If you want an on-prem solution, there's an on-prem solution. If you want a hybrid solution, some on-premise, but some in the cloud, we can offer that to you. Or if you want a pure hosted model where you want it up in the cloud, we're able to do that. There's not one shoe fits all. A small, medium business is going to probably go hosted. You know, they're not, they're not going to buy a bunch of IT, put in their five people, six people, ten people. They're not going to put that much in their, their, their site. Now it's much easier to put it up into the cloud. Mid-market, you know what, they may want to have both. They may want to have something on site and their data backup, their disaster recovery on the back end in somebody's cloud in order to ensure business continuity and disaster recovery. Scalability for their storage and content for that really valuable resource for the enterprise. And then of course, the big large companies are creating their own clouds. And there's a lot of opportunity there and they're building that out and they're outsourcing it to a provider that is able to manage that for them. We're able to provide you configurable platforms that handle the connectivity on mobility all the way out to the infrastructure and providing machine to machine all the way through. Uh, we have a group within Cenex called ICG. And ICG really is our traditional layer two, layer three switching, routing business, voice business, security business, all on the fixed line infrastructure. If you are a customer that does that, that's the beauty. I call that wrap and embrace, not rip and replace. Wrap that technology, wrap it and work from the edges and work in and start trying to replace it with more robust technologies. Everything from mobile risk management that you can attach as an additional platform, next generation intrusion protection or detection services that you may need, and work your way all the way around covering wireless LAN. These are the technologies, the core technologies that every enterprise is dealing with one way or the other. This is where the opportunity resides. And at the end of the day, as I mentioned, everybody's trying to get here, which is my voice services, unified communications, collaboration. We've put them in six pillars or six platforms, mobility, machine to machine, cloud-based services, productivity tools, which is really all of this stuff up here, your voice, your collaboration, your video, security and optimization, and then your core IP network capability. What does that look like? So let's build it out. These are the deliverable services today. Under mobility, it's really all your voice data plans, your collaboration services, voice, email, that whole backend infrastructure that you want to mobilize all the way out to enabling your workforce to be more productive. Everything that you can mobilize. On machine to machine, it's really that remote connections, rural broadband capability, disaster recovery, business continuity. These are the, the different platforms that we're providing there. On the cloud solutions, it's anything from mobilizing your vertical apps and solutions all the way out to the backup and restore. With the Terramark cloud, a worldwide brand, uh, I mean, you know, with the DOD and the NSA actually being physically located there, Verizon bought those guys out, and you'll hear more about it. This is probably one of the best back-end infrastructures to start building out a cloud solution. We have access to these solutions, and so you have access to those as well. On productivity, again, it's everything from field force automation, workforce productivity, all the way down to your basic, what we call mobile office, right? When I'm in my car, that's my mobile office. When I'm in a hotel, that's my mobile office. I get everything set up, whether it's a hotspot, and I've got three other employees with me and we're trying to access. I set up my phone, Verizon phone, I put on my personal hotspot, boom. I got wireless LAN right there. Or I'm doing my email, I'm on the, the network, and I've got my VPN client up and I've got a secure connection. This is really your, your office while you're traveling versus a remote user being somebody working from home, a telecommuter or a power user. So you've got these solutions all the way through as well to mobilize. And then these are really the infrastructure and security products. I've mentioned them, everything from your point to point, your traditional ATM, frame relay, Metro Ethernet, MPLS core backbones, uh, all the way out to your voice-based services. And then all the security on the back end from the device all the way to the fixed line infrastructure. All right, so what does this really look like at the end of the day? It's really about bringing these together as a platform. As I mentioned earlier, you can do them independently. You can say, you know what, I'm a mobile person. I want to really be mobile. Or I'm somebody that does machine to machine. Or I'm somebody in the cloud or networks, right? Or you could take the whole solution together. Or you could build it out and really provide an on-prem, a hosted or in a cloud solution. Again, depending on where your skill sets and core competencies are. 
At the end of the day, it's either productivity services or network infrastructure that you're going after. That's what it's really about. And then you dictate what else you can put into there. So we're really trying to provide key technology solutions to address industrialized markets and to address the need of the enterprise, not the consumer. And this is why it's crucial to really understand enterprise mobility and how we're looking at it and what we're designing. What does it mean to you? We're going from wired to wireless, from tethered to mobile. And for you, it's an end-to-end -end solution. It means greater margins of service. It means faster time to market. You gotta roll less trucks out there. You could build a residual business. And this is something that everybody's inputting. I don't know how many of you know that, but raise your hand. How many of you know that Verizon is the ninth most recognized brand in the world? Not all at once, just one at a time. I didn't know that. And you know why it's so important? Because now you have an entryway in, and we're going to be bringing other service providers in to, to provide other types of services that, again, is not in conflict, but is going to provide you with more ability to go into these markets. And this is where the opportunity for you is to really start creating a carrier business. The things that we're going to be doing, sales, training, marketing enablement, if you're focused on end-to-end -end solutions or want to provide it, if you are and have a dedicated team or want to create a dedicated team and need resources, we want to collaborate with you. We want to serve you. We want to show you the solutions. We want to really solve these challenges that we're seeing are coming in the enterprise realm. Not sell products and SKUs, but really provide solutions. So what do I need from you? Identify one opportunity that you think that you can start leveraging. Figure out what resources you need. Let us know. Let's talk to some of our reps here, April's people, you know, uh, Daryl, Tina, the other field account reps, Rory, whomever within Cenex that you want. Let's sit with you. Let us know what you need. And let us put you on this journey that we hope that you will take with us. Because we truly believe this is a game changer. I challenge each and every one of you to look at all the other distributors before you sign up with us. And I'll bet you anything you want, you won't find anything remotely like this. It is truly wanting to collaborate with you. So that's the message today. You'll see everybody now after me getting up is going to put their piece into this and address it more. And I hope that you find it as intriguing as we have and uh, the investment that we've put into it. And once, once again, I want to thank you very much for being here. And uh, I look forward to, to, to having further discussion later on in the session. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.